our certificate of taqwa. Because we are graduates coming out from the school of Ramadan. Some of us may receive those types of qualifications. Some of us may receive just a certificate of participation. May Allah SWT bless us all and forgive us for all of our shortcomings. Ramadan is the month of Iman. Ramadan is the month of Iman and we have, as I said, come out from that lower school of training and transformation. All of us here this morning, and Muslims across the globe, have felt that transformation within themselves because of that blessed month of Ramadan. Transformation from negligence and sinning and disobedience and transgression to transformation of submission and obedience. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi We have been able to the month of Ramadan to conform, to, to conform with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think about that for a moment. Let us not be like the one who have trade for the whole day and have made a lot of money during that trading time during the course of the day. And at the end of the day, coming towards the night, they just threw everything away. Let us not be like such a person whom Allah SWT has bestowed his favors of mercy and guidance and tranquility upon us. Let us not now turn our backs and show in gratitude to the one who has given us gratitude. It will be a means of insult and ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has guided us and now the month is completed we turn back to sin and transgression. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and forgive us. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to share with you this morning something of great importance not only to ourselves as Muslims, but to humanity at large. The world today is going through many, many changes. And these changes are because of our actions in this world. Ramadan, as I said, has called us to conform to the laws of Allah. One of the biggest problems that humanity faces and mankind faces faces today, and this is global, is dehumanizing, dehumanizing our fellow human beings. We look at the human being and we look at ourselves as different from other human beings. And that is a form of dehumanization. That is a form of dehumanizing our fellow human beings. And because of this, it's because we see ourselves and consider ourselves from many aspects. Number one, from country of origin. From country of origin. From the language that we speak. From the color of our skin. From our status and profession. We see these identities and we identify ourselves as such. And because of that identification, we see others not like us and cannot be like us and should not be like us. So we begin to dehumanize them because of how we see others through these different perspectives. One of the most frightening aspects of this differences you will find in religion throughout the globe. I am a Muslim. I am a Christian. I am a Catholic. I am Jewish. I am a Protestant. I am Sunni. I am Shia. I am this. I am that. And we base ourselves on these identities. And what is more disturbing and more 
frightening. Even within one's faith, regardless of which faith it is. Even within one's faith, we have this dehumanization. You're not doing like what I do, you're not believing in what I believe in. We don't want you. You from a different religion, you from Islam, we don't want you in our country. And this is the, this is the picture that has been painted throughout the globe. And this is when we, we began to dehumanize our fellow human beings. And not to see the human fraternity, the human race, as one single human family. And this has been brought about by our own selves. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you study the life of this messenger of Allah, he broke all these identities. He broke all these identities and he saw mankind from one perspective. And that was humanity. That was humanity. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't see the rest of humanity as special identities. No. He came in the 7th century Arabia. 7th century Islam, just after the coming of Isa alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam came. And when we look at even Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, that mighty messenger of Allah, even he himself was dehumanized by his fellow, by his fellow beings. He had to confront the Jews, he had to confront the Romans, he had to confront the the, the and all those other types of people that tried to be around him. And they tried to dehumanize him. He had a tough time with them. And then came Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 7th century, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed him as the universal messenger for all of mankind to follow. All of humanity to follow his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He also had a very rough time. In those times, the rigid Arabs, so rigid, if you are not one of, if you are not one belonging to their tribe, or if you are not worshipping what they worship, they will dehumanize you. They will cast you out because you are not one of us. And this is what they did to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or think that they had done this to him. He was one of them. Yet they looked upon him as not one of them. When Rasulullah sallallahu received his first revelation, First revelation that appointed him the message of Allah. He went to the Kaaba and he met the person, he met Waraka bin Nawfa, a blind man, related to Khadija Raja Allah Anha. And when he heard about Muhammad being anointed, so to speak, Given the number one, the prophethood, you know what he said to him? And listen to these words, brothers and sisters. Because these words is applying to us again in this century, in this 20th century. He said to Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You are indeed the message of Allah. The same spirit, the same angel that came to Musa Alaihi Salaam had came upon you. But, your people, your people, they will drive you out of this place. They will insult you. They will abuse you physically, verbally. And they will drive you out of this place. Now just imagine you have been told this by someone. 
And the beloved as he also was himself, will my people do that to me? Will my people do that to me? And Muhammad bin Nawfal said to him, there was not a messenger of Allah who came with this message that you have come with. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah. There was not a messenger of Allah who came with this message but was not dehumanized. But was not persecuted. And so today, those words are alive. Those actions are alive. I want to take you through the ayat of Quran. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting mankind to solve this problem. And this problem can only be solved when we adhere to the commands of Allah. Today, today humanity at large is not adhering to the commands of Allah. Is not adhering to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to what Allah SWT says, brothers and sisters. A message not only for us, a message for all of humanity. The rebel is Transmission is being transmitted to wherever you are. Allah SWT says in Surah Al Hujurat, chapter 49 of the Quran, ayah number 15 of the Quran. Ya Ayyuhannas, hmm? O people, who is speaking to us? Allah. O people, O mankind. Whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever you take yourself to be. O people, inna falakana min zakar min wa unsa. We have created you. Listen, listen to the words of Allah. We have created you from a male and a female. Who is that male? Who is that female? You go back to our father. Adam alayhi salam, Eve Allah alayhi salam. And not only had Allah created us from a male and a female, Allah then goes on to say, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شَهُوبًا وَقَبَاهِ إِلَىٰ لِتَعَارًا And we have made you, O mankind, into nations and tribes, this is the answer you know, my dear brothers and sisters. We have made you, Allah SWT has made you to nations and tribes. Different languages. Color of your skin. You know, there are things in our lives we have no choice concerning it. What, who we are, and so on. We have no choice. Many of us sitting here in this hall are born to the Daniels. Did any one of us tell Allah we do not want to be a Trinidadian? We have no choice in that matter. Wherever you are, whatever part of the world, that is where Allah puts you. We have no choice to the color of our skin. Did Allah say, or did you, did you tell Allah, oh, look, I want to be white? Or I want to be otherwise? Two colors, white and black. Black represents all the other colors. One color represents white. Did we tell Allah we want to be white or black? We have no choice. Did we tell Allah that, look, I want to be a female or a male? We have no choice. It is Allah who decides those things, and this is what we have to accept. But why did Allah make us different? A different here means color of skin, country of origin. Why did Allah make us different? The Quran gave us the answer. It are of who? So that you may know each other. Think about it. So that you may know each other. The Americans should know 
other other nation, Israeli should know other nation, Pakistan should know other nation, Arabia should know other nation. Coming together so that you may know each other. This is why Allah created us different. They are we who do not despise one another. Do not dehumanize one another. Allah said, Inna Akram wa Tumi in Dawdari Atkar. Still addressing mankind, you know. The best of you, the best of you, Allah didn't say the best of you is the Muslims, or the best of you is the Christians, or the best of you is the Jews, or the best of you are the Americans, or the best of you are the white or the black. No. Allah never said that. The best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are most worthy. Those who are most God conscious. Those who are most God. This is the criteria which Allah has judged humanity. Again, we love it, brothers and sisters. This is the answer to the world problem today. If all of the leaders can see humanity as of Allah describing it in this eyes of Quran, the world will be a better world today. Regardless of who they are. Inna abramakum in the Zawi I want to take you through the next few minutes. Of the sayings of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some of his examples, how he looked at humanity or the human being from one identity and identified the human race as every person is a human being. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, every morning when he wakes up, he will see garbage and rubbish in front of his door. Almost every morning, there was this Jew, Jewish person in Medina, they didn't like him. And they didn't like him because he was not one of them. They expected their prophet to come. They spoke about the prophet to come, but when he came, they realized he did not come, he did not come from one of them. He came from the descendant of Ismail, so they rejected him. So every other morning this Jew will come and throw the garbage and the trash in front of the door of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One morning the Prophet got up, he didn't see any rubbish, any garbage. The next morning the same thing. So he began, began to make inquiries. And he was told that this man was sick. Seriously sick on bed. The beloved Messenger of Allah sallam, went to see him, asked permission to enter his house. When the Jew in a sick condition, perhaps almost at, at, at the dying stage, he began to shiver and he told that this man has come to take revenge on him for what he has done, throwing the garbage in front of him. Rasulullah said, don't be scared, don't be frightened. I did not see any garbage in front of my house. I inquired about you, and then they told me you were sick. Allah! Allah instructed me to come to see you. You to be a Muslim, to be visited by a Muslim. This is our duty for all of humanity. Allah instructed me to come and see you and make two of you. A man who is to throw garbage at his door. Think about it, somebody doing that class, what would we do? What would we do? And seeing him as one of him, seeing this Jew as a human being, he made the motto of law. And you know what the Jew said? You, you have to be in the same of You cannot be anyone else. You have to be in the same 
seeing humanity as one identity. One night, the prophet heard a knock on his door. When he opened the door, another Jew showed up. This Jew had a sword in his hand and he said to the prophet, Lord, I want to spend the night with you. I don't want to spend the night at your home. I cannot travel with you. The Iran messenger Salah Salam said, No problem. And he gave that Jew his own mat that he used to lie down on, made of a palm leaf. And he spread a clothing and said, Oh, my brother, you see him. The mother of the Iran messenger Salah Salam was alone. And the Jew put his sword down. In the morning when the prophet woke up, there was no Jew. I mean the Jew that falling from heaven. There was no Jew, he had disappeared. He left in a hurry. And in his hurriedness, he forgot his soul. When the prophet looked at the dead, he saw the Jew and the Jew on the dead. And that is why he left in a hurry. The beloved messenger of Allah Salaam began to clean it, wash it. And while he was doing that, the Jew come back. He come back to get the sword. And then he came back, he saw the prophet washing the dirt of the bed that the Jew had related from him. When the beloved messenger of Allah saw him, he got up and he said, no need to look at that. I have already cleaned it up. And here is your sword, you forgot your sword. The Jews chased him on it. He said, no, 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 you can only be the messenger of Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is how we look at humanity. This is how we see humanity. One single identity as a human being. And this is what the world is not seeing today. This is not what the world leaders are seeing today. They are seeing others different and dehumanizing them. Rasulullah told his companions, don't stay in Mecca any longer, you will be persecuted to death. Go to Abyssinia. Nobody is to be here. Go to Abyssinia, there is a just king, Christian king, an African king. He will give you shelter. He will protect you. If you stay in Mecca, you are going to die. The companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you are sending us in Christian land. Our teaching is different. He said, you go. That is a just king. And they went to Abyssinia to get away from the persecution of Makkah, and they were most welcome. To such an extent that the king himself became Muslim. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is how we saw humanity. My dear brothers and sisters, the beloved message of Allah Allah Salaam said, all of Adam, all of the descendants, all human beings are the descendants of Adam. And Adam was created from dust. That's the first thing. He said, all of mankind are equal in the sight of Allah like the teeth of a comb. And listen to this. This one will bring tears to your eyes. On the day of Hajj, on that Blessed day, glorious day of Hajj, day of Arafah. The beloved messenger of Allah Sallam is speaking to his companions. 124,000 plus. And he asked them, what day is this? They did not answer. And he said to them, isn't it the day of Arafah? The most blessed day, the most blessed place. 
The most sacred day, the most sacred place. The same response is this. They did not answer. And then he said, isn't it the month of the Hitcha? The most, one of the most sacred months and blessed month. And then he said, what place is this? They did not answer. And then he said to them, isn't it the holy city? And in that holy city of Makkah is house the house of Allah, the Kaaba. The most sacred place on earth. And listen to what he said, my dear brothers and sisters. And if this the this does not change the thinking of world leaders today, then they have no heart. They will not change. He said to them, he said to his companions, to every person, the blood of every person, the property of every person, the, the honor and dignity of every person, every human being, is more sacred than this day and this month and this place. What can be more sacred than the house of Allah? What can be more sacred than the holy city of Makkah? And yet, look at how he sees humanity. The blood of every person, the property of every person, the honor of every person, is more sacred than this day, this month, and this month. Today, when you see what is happening in the world, so many bloodshed, so many unmerciless killing and unwanted killing of innocent people. Do not the world leaders think shedding the blood of these innocent people? What, what, what value is life today? Destroying homes and villages and countries. Bombing after bombing after bombing. Destroying the property of human beings. Dishonoring the honoring of human beings. And you are world leaders. You are leaders of the world. But they will come when you have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Muhammad saw in humanity. And finally, I want to say, and I personally believe that among all of the people of the world today, the Muslims are the ones who are most dehumanized by others. Just recently in India, a group of our sisters, properly attired, beautifully attired, walking the streets. You all would have seen this and you all have And there are those guys who wait in a bucket of filthy water and throw it on them. Throw it on them because they dress the way Allah wants them to dress. Isn't that not dehumanizing? You have, in, in, in Europe, You have the Prime Minister of England making a statement that the women in Islam, they are looking like post box. You know, you know what that box looks like? What that post box looks like? You only have one little thing on top of it. So you could show your meal inside. And it is crying of our sisters who are obeying Allah, you know. Allah commands them to dress like this. And this is the response from world leaders. But guess what? Guess what? When you interfere with the servants of Allah, Allah will interfere with you. We don't have to retaliate, you know. We don't have to respond. And 2019 to now, Allah affected the whole globe a plague, a virus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. And the very same persons who are criticizing us for dressing the way we want to dress, they are now covered and what you are seeing in their eyes. So they are also post box. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the message this morning. 
we have to continue the struggle, we have to face all these challenges in life, but we have to remain firm and steadfast and practice the deen of Allah so that others will see the beautiful way of this deen that Allah Taala will grant us that victory at the end of the deen. May Allah SWT bless all of you and all of us and the entire Ummah, the beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah SWT cause us to continue to submit to Him. May He forgive us for all of our shortcomings. May He accept all of our doors. May He accept all of our ibadah. And may He grant us a place in this paradise when we shall leave this world and return to Him. Akulu kawli haza astakarulai wa lakum. وَإِتَعَيَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَانَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ إِنَّ الْمُرْضَى فُرُضَى الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فضاء مضلة وما يبدله فضاء أديلة ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد يا الذي من صلى وقام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد يا الذي من قام وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم ربنا حضرنا بلزواجنا وزرياتنا كرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينا عن الفحشاء والمنكر والوكيل يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى على وأعوذ وأجل 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 وأتم وأتم أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد إيه مبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, so we all make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invoking his blessing and seeking his forgiveness insha'Allah and then following the dua as Mawana said you can free up yourself and enjoy the rest of your month Allahumma ameen اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. لنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. آمين. We begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praises are from Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful. O not the day of judgment. Thee alone do we serve and thee alone do we seek them. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast been pleased to bless for thy favors. O Allah, not the path of those who in thy wrath, nor those who are gone astray. Ya Allah, you are our greatest. You are our rock, you are our sustainer, you are our cherisher, you are our nourisher. Our Lord, we are trying hard to please you. We ask of you, Allah, to accept every letter we have read of your Quran and protect us and our families and our brothers and our sisters and our parents. O Allah, grant us good health. O Allah, grant us barakah, blessings and everything that you have given unto us. Ya Allah, we ask of you to bless, to bless us with, with the good things of this life. We ask of you, Allah, and also the good things in the life hereafter. O oh Allah, let this occasion be such that you are pleased with us. Ya Allah, we ask of thee that we have completed the reading of the, of the Quran during the month of Ramadan. 
the ask of you Lord, to bless our dear office, who have led us in this in this allotted for our request. We ask of you Lord, to accept it from all of us and convey the blessing derived from this recitation unto your beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unto all of our families who have gone to the great beyond. Your Allah, we ask for you to forgive them and have mercy upon them and grant them all the Jannah of Paradise. Ya Allah, you grant forgiveness and cure, and cure us from all sicknesses and diseases. Ya Allah, many members of our families and the Jamaat, many members of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many among mankind are healing, Ya Rabbul Alameen. We ask of you to rahim finite Muslims. You are the healer, the cure, the believer. There is no might of Allah except with you, Allah. Heal us all with the healing that comes from thee. You know each and every one of us and our different ailments, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, you are the healer, you are the cure, you are the redeemer. Grant us patience, strengthen our Iman in moments of trials and affliction. Ya Rabbul Alameen, when we leave this world, let us leave this world with Iman in thee and submission to thee, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Make our last deed just in thy sight, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask of thee to make our graves from among the graves of Jannah, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask of thee to grant us shahada on our tongue that we, when you take us away from this world, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask of thee that when we are left in the grave, with all our families and members returning to their homes, that our deeds of righteousness and pleasing to thee be, be, be our companions, Ya Rabbul Alameen. O Allah, we ask of thee in this troubled world that we are living in, that you protect us from all unseen dangers, Ya Rabbul Alameen. You protect us, Ya Allah, from the pandemic, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Whoever has, has contracted this virus, we ask of you, Allah, to have grace upon them and grant them shiba. Whoever has gone and passed away because of the virus, we ask of you, Allah, among the believing men and believing women. Though we forgive them and grant them all the gentle factors. Ya Allah, we beg of thee to ease the suffering of the world. Ease the suffering of our dear brothers and sisters throughout the globe, Ya Allah. Ease the suffering of all of mankind, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, you guide mankind to this path to your deed, the deed that will be accepted by you on the day of judgment, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we thank thee, we thank thee for the blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask of thee to bless us with Iman that we will continue to submit ourselves to you in submission and obedience and seeking forgiveness. And we beg of thee, Allah, let us not turn away from you or turn our backs from you. O Allah, we ask of thee to forgive us. Grant us all the good of this life and also the life hereafter. Ya Allah, bless our Jamaat, bless us in all our undertakings. Ya Allah, in this gathering here this morning, Ya Allah, there, there are those who are not well and those who are sick, Ya Allah. We ask of thee to show your healing blessings upon them. Ya Allah, you fulfill our needs for us in this world as well as in the next. Ya Allah, we beg of thee to forgive us for all our shortcomings, the dedication and sin, Ya Allah, we Ya Allah, we beg of you to bless us with the good of ourselves toward others and the good of others toward ourselves. Keep us always in thy remembrance, O oh Allah. Forgive us when we fall short of thy expectation. O oh Allah, we ask of you to kindly accept this humble door. For you are the hearer, the doer, the redeemer, the sustainer, the cherisher. All praises are for thee, the Lord of all the ways. Allahumma Rabbana taqabbal lina yinna ta'inta sami wa adhim. Wa tuba alayna ya maulana inna ka anta al-tawwa wa rukhim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayra khalkihi Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa zubiyyati ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhum wa rahmin. Alhamdulillahi wa ala alihi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alibu wa barakatuh.